everyone, it's Owen here from OTech and today we'll be taking a look at the Ryzen base workstation PC that I built uh, not too long ago and you know I'm sorry that this video took so long to uh, get out but I hope you enjoy the intro and now let's talk about the PC itself. Now for the specs itself, it has a Ryzen CPU obviously as the title suggests and it also has the Ryzen R7 1700X specifically. So the reason I go with that is because the buyer just wants that. I told him the 1700 is just the same thing but cheaper and you got the cooler but he said he wants the 1700X because it sounds like a faster one and it is, it is faster but I told him that I'll be overclocking it so it'll be the same thing anyways but he decided to get that. And it also has the MSI B350 Tomahawk motherboard. Which is a pretty decent motherboard in a B350 chipset and we went with that because we don't want this to be too expensive while still having all the performance of an 8 core Ryzen CPU. So we didn't want to go with a very expensive uh, motherboard and waste all our budget on that. And it is cooled by the Noctua NHU-12S cooler, uh, mostly because I couldn't find any other cooler in here that supports the AM4 mount, so I went with that. And then it also has 16 gigabytes of Team uh, T Force Vulkan memory at 3200 MHz. Although I ran it at 2933 MHz because that's the maximum I could do on this CPU and motherboard combo. And it also has an Inno 3D GTX 1070 iChill X4, the one with the quad fans as you can see. And it also has like a 550 watt Seasonic G3, uh, G550 uh, gold rated semi modular power supply. And it also has a 256 gigabyte Samsung 850 Evo and also a one terabyte hard drive. And it also has a like a Cube Gaming case. Uh, the brand is kind of weird. It is Cube Gaming. It's a Cube Gaming scone. And so with that specs out of the way, let's talk about what happened during building the PC and what I thought about it. So. Overall, the build itself went pretty well, and unfortunately, I couldn't record it this time, but, you know, because the time was really short on this one, since it is a workstation PC, so the buyer needed it fast, and he needs it for work, so I just decided to do it fast and not even record the build or time lapse, and also because the parts came in like in uh, segments, so I couldn't really make a good time lapse out of that. Anyway, so the build went pretty well, except for that. The cable management is kind of terrible in this case, but I managed to do it and I just kind of crammed all the cables on the back side and decided to just hope for the best and just close it in and hope that no one opens the back anymore or need to open it anymore because it's kind of hard to close once you get it open. And you know, the left side panel is just fine. The cooler clears it, doesn't hit, so that's, that's no problem. And then I also put more fans for a case since it only comes with one and that fan uh, fortunately is also the exact same fan as what you could get and it's also cheap in here at least. So I got uh, two more of those and just kind of stuck it on the exhaust and one on the intake and also one uh, on the top. So yeah, um, for the case itself it's actually pretty decent even though it's just a Chinese case. But unfortunately the front panel uh, is painted uh, silver. But as you can see, it's already black since the silver was kind of flaking off a little bit. So I just kind of spray painted it with black and it turned out great. It has a better finish, uh, in my opinion, than the original one. So yeah, that turned out pretty good, fortunately. And the overclocking side of things, uh, this CPU, the 1700X in particular in this build, only reached uh, 3.8 GHz since I'm pretty sure it's the VRMs overheating because if I put the clock speeds higher and increase the voltage, it would run and it'll be stable. But unfortunately, after some time, it kind of just shut down by itself. So I'm just thinking it could be just a VRM overheating problem. Although I can't really fix that since the fans are already on max and you know, putting a tiny fan on the VRM heatsink is just really not elegant. So I just decided to back it off to 3.8 which is uh, stable, it runs uh, overnight pretty fine. Um, and yeah, you know, because this is a workstation, I want it to be working 24 seven fine. So I'm not really pushing it on this one, although the board certainly can take it, just 
Make sure you have enough cooling since the heat sinks on the MSI motherboards are kind of small and they're basically just uh, aluminium box, no heat fence, heat, uh, heat sink fence so they don't really have a huge dissipation surface area for heat. And other than that, uh, I managed to run the memory at 2933 MHz without any problem so that worked out fine. And the GPU itself, I think I got it to over 2 GHz at least. Around around 2.05 GHz if I remember this correctly. Yeah, during a full load. Uh, although it does fluctuate, I mean it is Nvidia, so it's got that GPU throttle 3.0 technology so, uh, because you know I call it GPU throttle because it's not really boost technology since it's more like it slowly clocks down the speed and voltage when the temperatures creep up although the set temperatures are kind of too low since it starts down clocking at around 50 degrees so I really don't like Nvidia's uh, GPU boost 3.0 and I just call it GPU throttle since it's it's more like a throttling technology more than a boost technology because they could have just easily just put it on the max boost and that would be boost and, uh, but they didn't and I really hate that anyways enough rambling about Nvidia's technology but yeah anyways uh, this build worked out pretty fine and I had no problems actually with this build with the Ryzen uh, system except for when I first booted it up it wouldn't run with the memory stick um, both and salt and I have to run it with the memory stick on the second channel then it would run but if I run it on the left channel then it wouldn't even boot so after running it on a, a second channel I just went to the BIOS and set the memory profiles and increase the voltage to 1.4 volts and then I put this two st the two sticks in and then it booted fine so it's just a little bit of Ryzen bugs here and there but it's not a big deal and the only other thing that's kind of annoying is that the boat uh, the board uh, took forever to boot uh, so occasionally so yeah it's not perfect right with Ryzen in the state of it is uh, right now but it's pretty much usable st uh, still already so I wouldn't worry about it too much and yeah with the performance uh, it got about 1691 Cinebench points and also it got 16,000 517 fire strike and also 6830 on time spy so I couldn't really do a lot of benchmarks since like I said this build was on a tight schedule so I just ran these three which are which are just a like a standard benchmark for everyone you can download it and compare it to your own system but it's it's more just to get a rough idea of how fast this PC is so on the CPU side, you can see that it's really, really fast because it's an 8-core. It just seriously crushes the 7700K from Intel, which costs about the same or even maybe a little bit more expensive sometimes. So this 8-core from AMD is actually a really good value, especially if you're a content, content creator like the person that's buying this. He's going to be editing videos of that. So it's going to be great. And for gaming and like Fire Strike and Time Spy, it... The low clock of the Ryzen CPUs does hurt a little bit on the GPU scores, but it makes up for it in the combine and the CPU physics test. So the points are pretty okay in my opinion. Uh, and he did use the GTX 1070 because he wanted to play some games on it. So yeah, he would be able to do that with this since the GTX 1070 is still pretty fast. So yeah, anyways, uh, I think the last thing is just about the cooling and noise. The cheap fans that I got and the stock fans are actually not bad at all. Those are those won't really last long, I think. So he might have to replace it sometime later. But this was kind of on a budget build, so it's more like no frills, just anything that's uh, important that I put in. So yeah, it's probably the reason why I went to those fans. But those aren't really loud, and those are pretty fast, uh, around thirteen hundred RPMs on maximum fan speed. So they push enough air. And the nocturnal heatsink is just super quiet to the point that I would say the fan is a bit too slow since on maximum speed you can't even hear anything and sometimes you just feel like you need a bit more cooling. But it's pretty much fine for cooling the uh, Ryzen CPUs since those have soldered uh, IHS so the temperatures are much lower than Intel. But yeah that's pretty much it for this build. Uh, 
Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And if you do, please leave a like. And please click subscribe to see more of my PC builds and my other videos as well. So yeah, and please leave a comment if you want to say anything about the belt or ask me anything. Thanks for watching.